Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we have some Colorado mods planned, and believe it or not, it's actually a pretty nice day in Pennsylvania for once. So let's get right to them. All right, guys, so here's what we got today. This is a 30 inch curved black series light bar from Rough Country. And as you can see in here, it's all blacked out. So the little Allen screws here, black, Basically, the only bits of tiny bit of chrome is in there with the actual LED. Everything else is black. So it will really go well with the red and black look on my truck. And since I have the front bumper off anyway, we're also going to go ahead and install the bison style front Colorado grill. Now, I did something a little bit different with my bison grill. I actually took it apart and painted the Colorado lettering red. So again, kind of to go with my red and black look. Plus I haven't seen anybody else who's done this yet. I already did it. I already took it apart and painted it, but it's not a big ordeal to get it taken apart. So I'll show you the clips on the back you have to pop out and we'll kind of go through the whole install process from there. So here's the grill guys. Like I said, I popped that out, painted it red and then put it back together. Now, if you haven't seen the video when I met up with Matt1003 on YouTube, I'll go ahead and link it up at the top right here. But ultimately, this particular grill has been a hot topic for you guys recently. You've been asking me if I had planned on installing this. And honestly, until I saw it in person, the answer was no. I didn't really like the pictures of it. But after seeing it on Matt's truck and seeing all the details that the grill actually has in it, I fell in love with it. So I went home that night and bought it. Then I thought about whether or not the matte black piece was molded onto the gloss black piece or if it was just held on with clips. Because if it was held on with clips, I was going to pop them off, paint that stuff back there, and then clip it back on. And that's exactly what I did. So let me turn it around here and I'll show you guys what clips you're going to need to pop off if you want to do this with your grill. There is a clip here, clip here, clip here, and then there's a bunch of clips that run all the way through right actually behind the Chevrolet uh, lettering so you want to pop all those out then a couple clips down here at the bottom and that front mat piece will pop right off giving you access to just the little square holes here for the lettering at which point you mask it off and you paint it like you would anything else that's how you do it now of course with the rough country light bar we also got the rough country hidden bumper mounts these will actually attach to the crash bar behind the bumper and allow this little mounting post here to stick out just slightly in the factory cutout on the bumper. So it will look real nice and clean when it's all said and done. I'm gonna go ahead and actually show you the majority of the install process here as well as removing that front bumper. It's probably not gonna be the easiest thing on the planet, but from what I've seen, it's not too difficult. So let's just get right to it. First, we're gonna go ahead and jack the truck up and get those tires off. If you guys haven't seen the video where I put on the fender flares, I actually purposely made a cut in the double-sided tape right here. That way this part down was not actually adhered to the bumper because I had a feeling I was gonna be taking that off at some point. And it's a good thing because I am. It's all about thinking ahead. At the bottom of the fender well, we have one, two, three T15, torque screws that we're gonna have to remove. And if you have fender flares like I do, you'll have to remove one, two, three to allow this to be pulled back enough to get to the bumper screws. If you have fender flares like I do, you'll wanna actually move them out of the way a little bit to expose one more hidden T15 Torx head right there. Once you take that out, you can actually just move the fender shield completely out of the way. This won't likely be an issue for you unless you do have the fender flares like I do, but I was able to get this pulled back enough that if you look in here now, you can actually see the screw heads right there. There's one bolt out. There's not a lot of room to move a ratchet around, so be prepared for that. This is a seven millimeter head and there's three of them per side. Don't forget to unplug your fog light harness if you do have fog lights because those come off with the bumper. There's four T15 screws here we'll have to remove, then two more over here. And so six all together on the driver's side and six more over on the passenger side. This is just so the bottom of the bumper is free when we go to remove it. 
Up on top, we have six T15 screws, three on each side. With the bolts out, we can pick up on this a little bit and just pull it forward. And then it is ready to go. And lastly, there are two more bolts, one right there and one right there. You'll need an extension to get to them and a 10 millimeter socket. Once you get these off, the bumper is now ready to be removed. Make sure you have something nice and soft to set it on, especially if you're gonna go ahead and remove the grill like I'm going to. You want it to be nice and soft, that way it's not getting scratched up while you're taking this off. So the back of the bumper, there are clips every so often here, and that's, that's really it. That's all that's holding that uh, grill onto the bumper. So we're gonna undo these, get the new grill on, which, like I said, these are just, you just move them up and down and pull the actual grill off. I would have felt like it was on there with something a little more substantial than that, but apparently that's all it needs. So after we do that, then it's on to these things here. We have to actually cut these out. I'm gonna use a pair of snips. These are pretty sharp and I can get right up on here as close to the actual top and bottom as I can and just clip them off. With the light bar, it won't fit with those on there. And in true car guy form, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this edge right here, this lip that sits underneath the actual grill, just so it's good and clean for the new grill to go on to, less to possibly get scratched up. Look how beautiful, guys. That's it. It is ready to be installed. There it is. Real easy to get that on and off though. So to get these off, like I said, I'm gonna slip these snips in and go as close to the surface as I can and just crimp them. And we'll do that six more times. And the aftermath. That stuff is really all gonna be hidden by the light bar anyway, so it doesn't have to look perfect. It is a little nerve wracking cutting up your OEM bumper, but that's not too bad. I mean, those little pieces are barely anything anyway. To install the hidden bumper mounts for the light bar, we're gonna wanna remove these two 15 millimeter bolts that's holding the crash bar on. You'll basically remove those, slip the actual bracket in behind it, and then bolt them back down. Just like that. Those holes line up, now we just bolt the crash bar back on. So I ran the wiring for the light bar back through here, out through right there, zip tied it to some factory wiring, and this is the additional harness for the light bar. Tied in, zip tied up to the windshield washer fluid motor wire, and then run it up through the engine bay to the battery where we're going to ultimately need to connect it. So for now we can go ahead and put the bumper on and then finish up the wiring for the light bar. There it is guys, what do you think? That light bar gives it such an aggressive look. So I got everything lined up, everything's ready to go. I just gotta bolt everything in and then we're gonna move on to the wiring of the light bar. So when running the wire, it comes up right through here. I connected the positive right here, the negative obviously right there. I mounted the relay harness right there. I just zip tied it to existing wiring. And this part that has to run into the cabin, I'm actually gonna put it right back through there. I'm not sure how well you're gonna be able to see that. Right there. There's actually a little indent in the rubber. If you push something metal through it, it will actually puncture through to the inside of the truck pretty easily. I actually have half of a metal coat hanger hanging in there right now. I'm gonna go ahead and tie this end to it. But in order to get this to pull through as easily as possible, 
I'm actually gonna de-pin this connector. Inside the truck, you can see up under the dash where this wire is coming from is right there out of the main harness coming into the truck. So there's actually, like I said, a spot you can push this right through. It actually pops through pretty easily and then you just pull it through the truck and then we'll find our spot to mount the button and that's pretty much it. And then to repin this, uh, you're gonna want to have made a mark on this. If you can see, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I scratched right here indicating where the black goes. Blue is in the middle and white's on the opposite end of black. So to repin it, you basically just push the connections back in and you should hear them snap. And that's it. I'm not sure if you were able to hear those clicks or not, but they click in place and it's held tight now. I installed the button up under the steering wheel right there, kind of out of the way of everything. Ran the wire down behind the actual steering wheel out beneath the dash and this is where it's connected right here i'm just gonna go ahead and zip tie the rest of the wire up under the dash and then we're all done and here's the final product guys all lit up ready to go it is extremely bright and it looks great i mean it actually looks good on the truck even when it's not on all right guys that's gonna do it for today's install we ultimately got the rough country 30 inch curved black edition light bar installed and the bison style colorado front grill Ultimately, I think it looks fantastic. It really gives the truck a real nice sporty look. And honestly, it's all OEM parts, so everything fits beautifully. And the fact that I was able to pop that grill apart and paint the Chevrolet background in, it really helps set it off. Just gives it that little bit of a difference where it won't necessarily look the same as the, a Bison if I ever run into one on the street. Or I know the 2019s actually had the option for that grill as well. So it will set me apart a little bit from all of them. The install wasn't bad though. The hardest part obviously is removing the front bumper. That only really had to be done for the actual hidden bumper mounts for the light bar. You can install that front grill without removing the front bumper. From what I've seen, it looks like it might be a little bit more of a tricky type thing, but in my opinion, I would just remove the front bumper. It's really not that difficult. The side parts of the bumper are probably the hardest with the, the three seven millimeter bolts that go down through because the top one especially has got real tight clearance. But honestly, once you get in there and get those loosened up, it comes right off. So not bad at all and honestly like i said the truck looks fantastic but anyway guys that's going to do it for today's video if you have any questions feel free to shoot them in the comment section down below or hit me up on instagram twitter or even send me an email horse.power.obsessed at gmail.com give me a thumbs up though if you like this video subscribe if you haven't yet and i'll catch you guys in the next upload